Welcome to another episode of Frightfully Forgotten Horror Movies. But before we get started, what are we drinking? Today we are drinking Taste the Beer of Dracula. <laughs> it's a extra special bitter. Today we're doing a request episode. Our good friend Joel has been hounding us to do this movie since day one. So <laughs> today we're talking about 1988's Waxwork. <laughs> the movie was written and directed by uh, Anthony Hickox. He did some movies, but one notable worth mentioning is Hellraiser 3. Hell on Earth. <laughs> With that CD player guy. <laughs> Zach Galligan is in this. He plays like the main male lead. And uh, he was in Gremlins. Deborah Foreman's in this, and she played uh, Buffy, or Muffy, in uh, April Fool's Day. And uh, David Warner was in this too. And, uh, Ah, he's in tons of shit. Patrick McNee is also in this. Ah, Mrs. Peel. <laughs> you don't even say what he's in. Just Mrs. Peel. <laughs> Why? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the movie starts off kind of in a mysterious way. This man being assaulted in his house gets thrown like head first into the fireplace. It then takes us to present time. We're introduced to the main character, a rich, spoiled little brat. Breakfast in this big, long dining table with his mother and he goes to leave to go to school and the butler comes and your caffeine, sir, and your nicotine. <laughs> Two of Mark's friends are walking to school that day and they walk past this big mansion, which I'm sure they've walked by a gazillion times anyways. <laughs> <Listen>. Now they <laughs> notice that suddenly it's this waxwork museum. And this man appears out of nowhere. He invites them and specifies bring four more of your friends to the waxwork tonight for a special viewing. It shows the kids at school, they're being taught history by some Nazi teacher. <laughs> yeah. <He's, laughs> yeah. He all does the high yeah. thing by accident. That night they actually decide to go to the waxwork. Door opens and it's this weird midget <laughs> person. This, we were expecting, expecting more. <laughs> so weird, you don't even know what the hell that guy is saying. <laughs> <laughs> they go into the waxwork, most of the displays are based off of horror movies and horror stories. And they look oddly very lifelike. Very though. lifelike. <laughs> Too lifelike. Yeah. Tony uh, gets a little close to one display, gets sucked into the display, and then he's in this different world. He walks up to this kind of log cabin and opens it up. Gimli from Lord of the Rings is there. <laughs> he starts turning into this werewolf. Crazy looking werewolf. Mm -hmm. This thing is fucking huge. A couple of guys show up to take on this werewolf. Their gun's not even loaded. They have to take all this time to yeah. load this old gun. <laughs> Drop the bullets, yeah. of course. You're coming here to fight. Yeah. Wouldn't you have everything ready? <laughs> Just <laughs> blow the thing away. The werewolf fucking destroys these guys, grabs one guy and tears him literally in <laughs> half. He ends up biting Tony. And Tony starts turning into a werewolf. He appears in the actual display at the waxwork, he materializes as being part of the display. Yeah. Their other friend, China, ends up getting too close to this kind of vampire-looking display. She gets sucked in. Dinner table with all these strange people, and she's being served bowls of blood. Yeah, and all this weird flesh yeah. shit. She makes her way down the basement and sees this guy strapped to this slab, and his legs all kind of half eaten and torn up. His rat's like eating away at his yeah. already eaten. He's like, Aah! One of the vampires comes down and ends up fighting with China, and they're kind of fighting over the guy yeah. who's being eaten. He's like, Aah! They're all fighting over his open wounds and everything. The brides of Dracula come down. It turns into a big blood bath. Yeah, there's blood spraying everywhere. And... In this nice white room. I like that kind of <laughs> contrast. She ends up being killed, and then she becomes part of the diorama. Mark and Sarah start looking for their friends. They can't find them anywhere. That little midget guy yeah. is like, Oh, they've left! Friends have left! <laughs> <laughs> they haven't appeared at school either, so they start to think something's up. Mark goes to the police. Begrudgingly, he does go down to the waxwork to go check things out. He gets close to the mummy display, and he gets sucked into that. It starts off that him and this old guy, they open the sarcophagus. The old man quickly kicks the bucket. Yeah. He, like, throws a spear into the mummy, and the mummy picks him up and the runs him through. Him <laughs> I like the mummy's kind of like puking out all this black bile like yeah. shit onto the, on the Into old the guy's mouth. Yeah. It's like, ah. <laughs> the mummy just picks 
him and this girl up and throws him into the sarcophagus and seals it up. So Mark starts to do some investigating about this wax work and he goes up to the attic of their house, finds newspaper clippings of the owner of the wax work years in the past and he looks exactly the same then as he does now. Mark decides to talk to uh, his grandfather's friend, uh, Sir Wilfred, and it turns out that Mark's grandfather was into, like, Haitian voodoo. Items from some of the most evil people in the world that ever existed. Those items, it turns out, were stolen in the beginning of the movie by Lincoln, who's now owning the waxwork. It's all so super that, convoluted. Yeah, it's quite convoluted. Lincoln sold his soul to the devil. Sold your soul? Sold your soul! Lincoln wants to use these wax works. He has to feed them victims yeah. to give them enough power to bring them to life so he can take over the world. <laughs> yeah, it's like, whoa! Yeah, it's like, holy. Even explaining it is like, what the hell? Mark and Sarah hatch a plan to burn down the wax work and that's where we're gonna end it if you want to see what happens with mark and yeah. sarah and the wax work yeah keep watching this movie is just basically tons of fun tons of 80s horror camp fantasy fantasy, fun. fantasy. this is fantasy <laughs> it pays tribute to all these classic horror movies the wolfman in there we have vampires we have there's the little, mummy the mummy there's a zombie little thing that happens mm -hmm. house of wax wrapped in a different type of story and they're all done better than most movies are done now yeah within like five or ten minutes per little yeah. scene the practical effects are awesome in this oh movie. yeah for sure it's like an anthology movie there's all these little stories but there's still a big overall story a mm -hmm. big plot so it's like a good combo between those kind of 80s style anthology creep show but with the big story arc that kind of wraps everything together in a nice package a nice neat little package yeah. the characters are pretty neat because like for example the main character mark he starts off as this kind of rich little prick not really a prick he's not really an asshole but he's just kind of like he gets everything he wants but then in the end he kind of becomes the hero Mm -hmm. so there's character development. Yeah, like the right? character of Sarah, for example, she's kind of like the timid, quiet girl. But in the end, you find out she's completely different. She's in that yeah. Maquis de Sade uh, thing. <laughs> yeah. She's all being whipped and she's all into it. Whipped <laughs> to orgasm. It's like, whoa! <laughs> Keep going! <laughs> the fact that they were able to get all of the characters across to the viewer is amazing in such a short amount of time. And you see them hang out at the school and stuff, and there's not a whole lot of dialogue and everything, but you know right away almost everything about them. Yeah, who's who, who mm -hmm. likes who, yeah. you know, who's jealous of who, all that kind of stuff. You and, know? and you get the sense that they're all very close friends, too. Yeah. And they, they do it in such a short amount of time, which is great. If you haven't seen the movie, we're not going to wreck the ending for you, but it is one hell of a <laughs> kind of final act. It's just mayhem and madness and... You get to see all sorts of crazy shit go down. You get to see <laughs> yeah. Patrick McNee in some special war wheelchair and <laughs> yeah. old men being killed and stabbed and explosions and yeah, it's crazy. Wh whippings and it's just wild. <laughs> so if you're a fan of basically 80s fantasy, fantasy horror camp movies, you know, stuff like Monster Squad, tons of fun. It's colorful and it's written very well. Yeah. And the effects are great, Yeah, the characters are awesome, and it's fun. Yeah, <laughs> It's just a fun movie. And that's really what we enjoy, is a fun movie. Then you get a thumbs up from us. <laughs> and until next time...